prompting many families to hit the roads. The good vibes don't always last that long. Researchers have revealed it takes on average 33 minutes for arguments to start to break out amongst most family when they're on a road trip. So, on the grill today, we're joined by family therapist Karen Phillip and journalist Jacinda Titan. Great to see you both. Good morning. Um, okay, 33 minutes. <laughs> I would say that's pretty good going for the circumstances. <laughs> I don't agree with it. I don't think we do argue within 33 minutes at no. all. I mean, gosh, it takes us two hours to go to Sydney for a start. So what are they saying, that we've had four arguments before we even get out of the city? I, I don't think so. And if you're arguing every 30 minutes with your partner, I think perhaps you should perhaps re-look at travelling with your partner. Yeah. And if it's in regards to children, busy kids don't argue. Yeah. So find ways to entertain them and keep them busy. In the I, I get tense before the trip starts because I like to feel like we've got a sort of a plan. We're yes. leaving at eight. Wheels up. Yep. Let's go. Oh, and you don't. And get then at eight twenty, eight thirty, you know, I'm starting to say, "Are we ready? Are we ready?" Just sit there. Well, I, I don't know whose car you're in because <laughs> I'm like, there. There, it's like a pressure cooker in there when you've got little kids. I'm one of six, so we used to have eight of us in a combi van. Oh, wow. And, and what a great the, trip. the fights were over. That's don't touch me. That's my <laughs> section. And I know I do remember my mother pulling over on more than one occasion and chucking a few of us out of the car and being left on the side of the road. Yeah. She would come back. But now that I'm a mother, I understand that because <laughs> I try and drive. I'm actually driving tomorrow. I'm on a road trip tomorrow with my two kids. Yes. And I try and drive at their sleep times, and I always Great give idea. them things yeah. to do. I have a, a little a collection of toys that I ferry back into the back seat. But <laughs> the thing is, they fight because they don't want to be strapped in the seat for hours. That's just unnatural for kids. So yeah. of course they just want your attention, and they, they he hit me, and then you have to pull over and. Bury food back to them and it's dangerous actually because you can't keep around the road. My little girls don't have a concept of time yet but they know how long a Dora show is. Uh -huh. So how long will it take us to get there? Oh, about six Dora shows. <laughs> yes, and of course great. five minutes later. <laughs> How many Dora shows left? I haven't, done, I haven't done the DVDs on the back of the car yet. I'm trying to be a purist oh, about do, do. that. Oh, look, if you, if, you keep, if you take plenty, as you said, if you take a lot of activities for them, play a lot of games, depending on the age of the children, but the I Spy games and how many cars can we, can we count that are blue or green or red? I mean, we can keep them occupied and busy. And I had three um, within three years, and we drove a lot. We never actually really had arguments. Well, that's OK. That's OK for the rest of us. It's therapeutic to have a blow-up before you get there. There's no, no, no point having a blow-up on your holiday. Oh, no. Blow-ups are never good. And you've got to keep the trip short, don't we? That's the, yeah, that's, short trips. Yeah, that's little, little snippets and get out. Have them run around. I reckon about three oh, Dora shows is the limit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going to camp. Now, now, there's currently a baby boom underway, but not as we know. Parents are proving to be just as fussy about what their toddlers eat as the kids themselves. And this has resulted in a bit of a boom in home organic. Some mums and dads are spending fortunes on organic baby food, with others going as far as sourcing locally grown produce and whipping up purees of their own. You know, stuff that they've grown themselves, yeah. pureeing it. I think it's... That's their problem with it. I it is expensive, right. though. Organic food is expensive. It is, but I don't know I'm if you really need to I'm just laughing because who's got the time? Yeah. For well, that's sake. true. But I don't know if you really need to purchase organic as such because I know it can be extremely expensive. But as long as you, you get good produce and you wash it thoroughly, you steam it, I think most of the chemicals that, uh, that are sprayed on them are gone anyway. So I don't... What I'm concerned about is that we go into all this effort when they're little... And then what a, a new survey recently came out uh, with the Department of Health to say by 2020, they're expecting 65% of our children to be yeah. obese. So it's like, it's great when they're little, but what happens when they turn 18 months, two years old? What are we doing? If we could continue all of this right through their childhood, that would be fantastic. That, that, that is a very good point. So, Jacinda, are you uh, out there pureeing your own pumpkins? I'm past the puree stage, thank goodness. No, I'm, I'm, I used to be a bit of an eye roll about all of this. Like, oh, gosh, who cares, organic. But I did go to a kids' nutrition workshop just a few weeks ago. And because I thought, look, we all ate normal food. We're OK, whatever. But it was pointed out to me, of course, the, the bread, the dairy, the vegetables we're eating now are not what they were when we were young, of mm -hmm. course, because of genetically yeah, modified and pesticides and chemicals. You look how well we all turned out. Yeah, <laughs> we actually don't know what we're dealing with. So I'm trying to be a bit more aware, but hello, $8 for a loaf of organic bread, mm. $6 for a litre of organic milk. So it's very hard to keep up with that. And also sometimes it's just it's just hard work trying to be. It is. Economically, it's just about impossible. But I don't yeah, think we is. really need to do it. I really don't think we need to go that far. Oh, I said to some mums the other day, they said, oh, what are, you, what are you giving your children for a snack? And I said, 
tiny teddies. It was met with gasps of <gasps> horror, and someone said to me, that's kids heroin. No, <laughs> no. I think, no. can we just chill out a little bit? But oh, at the exactly same time, right. try and be aware. So I, I just pepper it. I just pepper a little bit of organic with yeah. all the bad stuff. And, and everything in moderation is good. A little yeah. packet of tiny teddies every now and again. Oh. Absolutely. But I'm not growing my own market garden, I'll have you know that now. It's not happening. Channel 9 had grown to a halt with that tiny teddies. There's a very famous director here who just, he is on heroin, as far as the tiny teddies are concerned. <laughs> now, there have been a, a hit since the 19th century, but the humble hot cross bun is not so humble these days. There's coffee flavoured, Nutella infused, uh, there's caramel ones out there. And it's, you know, it's an Easter treat that seems to have lost its religious symbol symbolism and it's just another confectionery now is this a health issue do you think Karen? no look easter buns are around once a year for a few weeks and i think the more variety we have the better i like a whole lot of variety but the fact that they're making gluten-free wheat free i think is an absolute bonus mm -hmm. and we really do need to cater for a wider range in our community rather than just the standard easter bun i'm a bit of a traditionalist i just think Easter bun started because, you know, it was after Lent and mm. it was whatever was left in your cupboard, that's what they were made out of sultanas and wheat. So I quite like that tradition. So, and it's the only time of the year I eat sultanas. I don't like them, but they taste good in a whole Sultanas are good in a whole range of things. Curries, um, rice pudding. <laughs> yes, curries. Yes. Curries there. Yes. Uh, what else is sultanas good in? Porridge? Yeah, right. Oh, okay, no. we're not a sultana. We're get out there and live on the edge. <laughs> we're getting off the track here. We're talking about hot cross Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I, I like the old hot cross. I like the standard hot cross bun. <laughs> yep. uh, I did make a mistake and buy some chocolate chip ones the other day, which we sort of binned yeah. because I didn't like them. So I, while I do enjoy the traditional one a couple of times a year, I think if we've got a variety and people can choose what they want. I mean, they're not force feeding down our throat. That's true. We can choose. That's true. We're, We're talking about hard own. topics here this morning. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm still lost in that combi road trip. That would have been fun. <laughs> yeah, that Who got to hold the uh, gerbera? I think of combis and... Gerbers for some reason. Don't they sell Volkswagens with Gerbers these days? What stuff? era are you? Oh, I don't know. No, no, this is modern day. Modern day. Thank you, ladies. Happy Easter. Thanks, Thanks Ken. Thank you. Layla. You